Hello everybody and happy December! I cannot believe time has flown and this year has just sped by and I'm not even going to talk about how I feel like 2019 was just yesterday. I am panicking. But let us talk about language learning updates. My favorite thing to talk about. Uh, I am going to take you guys through how it has gone in October and November. I know that there are a few of you who have stuck around for my language updates for the whole year. Sorry for being a little bit inconsistent with them, but I hope I am catching up. Uh, I have not yet really set goals for December, and here's why. It has been a whole year of language learning, as well as a whole year of so many busy things that are happening in life in general. And I have changed the way I approach language learning. So in 2020, right at the start of the year, I gave myself 12 languages that I want to both maintain, uh, keep stable, and learn anew. Uh, and it was difficult, not because the languages are difficult per se, but because I had to split my time across 12 languages. It was hard to dedicate enough time to each language. So how I approached language learning in 2021 is to allocate one or two main languages per quarter in the year. And it went well for the first two quarters of the year, for the first half of the year. But I fell off the horse with Tagalog. I was really into learning Tagalog in January, February and so. Um, and then I just stopped and I have a video explaining why, which I will link. For some reason, Hungarian and Spanish just remained with me throughout the year and I was so excited and so passionate about Hungarian and Spanish. And as such, I have not really completely stuck to my plans of having a new language um, or a different language rather to do every three months. Somehow it just turned out that this year was really my Hungarian and Spanish year. Ma az a live TV Budapesten um, fogok beszélni a nyelvtanulásról, és nagyon-nagyon ideges vagyok. And it feels really weird because up until about two years ago, I was completely focused on Korean, Japanese, Mandarin, Chinese, and maybe French. And now it seems like I've moved a lot more towards Hungarian and Spanish, but that is life. It happens and it's very exciting. So why I am not setting goals for December is because, uh, well, because we're already almost halfway through the month and because I realized that planning it out so specifically is not doing me any favors where when I kind of just end up doing what I feel like. However, I have had goals and frameworks which have kept me, you know, focused. I have taken uh, one hour of Hungarian lessons and one hour of Spanish lessons every week uh, very consistently for a few months now. And I like having that stability and that framework. So anyway, all that aside, let's go through how it went in October and November. So I gave myself very, very like two sentences of goals to do for quarter four, which is just nothing. Um, I told myself in October to rest and focus on design, and that is exactly what I did. I also told myself I would restart my Spanish lessons on italki, I would continue with my Hungarian lessons, and I would finish my Spanish book. I did not finish my Spanish book. However, I did restart my Spanish italki lessons, and I did indeed continue with my Hungarian lessons. Here is a funny story I want to share from what happened last Sunday. I had a Sábado de Español, which is our Spanish language exchange event here in Singapore. So I went and I spoke Spanish for the whole afternoon from about 3 p.m. until 6 p.m. And then I went home and realized I had a Hungarian lesson, which I forgot about. I made it in time, but my brain was obviously in Spanish mode. During my Spanish language exchange, it felt as if the Spanish wouldn't come out properly. Like I struggled to speak. I understood everyone just fine. There was a native Spanish speaker at our table. It was a great conversation, but it just didn't come out so fluidly. And then when I went home for my Hungarian lesson, it went so well, like, dare I say it was the best Hungarian lesson I've had this entire year. For some reason, I was able to speak really fluidly. And it's not like I studied a lot of Hungarian in the past few weeks. Um, in fact, I was like 
lazing around a bit with Hungarian and really focusing on Spanish. My Hungarian tutor has this thing he likes to say, which is which is like, oh, you know everything today, uh, which is just his nice way of being like, that's impressive, you are not struggling as much in this lesson. And he kept saying that, he's like, because at the start of my lesson, I told my tutor, hey, I don't think I'll be able to speak Hungarian very well today because I've been focusing on Spanish the whole day. So excuse me if I stumble. And it just flowed so naturally. And both my tutor and I were surprised. We're like, why is Lindy not having a hard time speaking Hungarian? I don't know. If you guys know why this happens, please let me know in the comments. But then a week later, when I took my Spanish lesson, I told my t Spanish tutor and I said, why do you think um, I really struggled with Spanish at my exchange, but my Hungarian lesson went really well? And he said, well, you know, sometimes your brain just needs to take a little bit of a break, um, internalize everything. Like, it's like going to the gym. You can't go to the gym every single day. You have to rest. And maybe taking a short-ish rest from Hungarian to focus on Spanish meant that when I went back to Hungarian, it just came out really naturally. But yeah, I think this is a really interesting thing that happens. So <clears throat> those are my updates with how Hungarian and Spanish is going. But uh, let's go back to October. What I did in October, I restarted Spanish and met my new Spanish tutor who is amazing. I spoke at Polyglot Conference online. I shared a, um, a talk with Benny Lewis. We discussed uh, how to learn languages while still having a full-time job, like balancing work and languages. So sometimes I write like language learning, general language highlights of the month. Um, and I learned seven hours and 41 minutes of Hungarian, six hours and 58 minutes of Spanish, one and a half hours of French and one hour of Korean. That was for October, which was actually my rest month. Then for November, uh, it was Polyglot Nano Remo, which is where you can write 200 words in a foreign language every day. And I only managed to get up to like eight or so days and it just got really busy. So that sucks. I did not finish Polyglot NaNoWriMo. Sorry, not sorry. I spoke at Languages in Science, which was a really fun event. Um, I shared about how to use product design thinking and apply it to your language learning. I can give you the link to the talk if you want to watch the recording. I only did one hour of Hungarian on italki because my tutor was on holiday and I worked on building my language learning app. So there's something really exciting coming up, which I'll tell you guys more about later this month and in January, but I am also building a language learning flashcard app. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, so I did 17 minutes of Japanese. I have no idea what I did in those 17 minutes. That is just the weirdest metric ever. Three hours and 47 minutes of Spanish. Uh, one and a half hours of Hungarian and 25 minutes of Chinese. These times that I track do not include passive learning. So I do listen to a lot of podcasts, music, watch TV shows, etc. I don't uh, count those. These are only active hours. So speaking of passive learning, another thing that I like to do is to just use the Tukan extension while I'm browsing the web. And they did release uh, Korean and Japanese recently. So I do feel that even though I've been learning Korean for like 10, 11 years, not actively practicing it really this entire year has made my vocabulary become a bit rusty. Like I hear something and I'm like, oh man, I used to know what that word was. Uh, so recently I've switched Tukan over into Korean so that I can see a lot more Korean words. So today's video is actually very kindly sponsored by Tukan. Tukan has three cool new features that they brought in. It is fluency checks, a progress report, and practice sessions. So it's no longer just an extension that you can connect to your Google Chrome that will convert the words to the language you're learning, but you can take it a step further and practice what you've learned and see how much of this word have I been exposed to and how fluently do I know this word. Another thing that I found super handy is the I know this word feature, especially with a language that I'm more advanced in like Korean, I find myself using the I know this word a lot more over here, you can see my collection of saved words. So these are words that I definitely didn't know until I encountered them. And it's really nice that it keeps it for me nicely in a solid place that I can always go back to and review and practice. If you are learning English, another thing that you can do is change the language that you speak, Spanish, for instance, 
And then say you want to learn English. And this is a new feature where you can have all of the words show up in English and your interface will be changed to the language that you chose first. If you want to download Toucan on your browser as an extension, do look at the link in the description to check it out. You can use it completely free or you can pay for premium to get a lot more features. If you want to see more of my language learning updates throughout the year, I will link the videos in the description. And I also have lots of blog posts about how I plan my language learning. So do check my website out at lindybuetis.com. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.